We are excited to bring you this show this week. We've compiled what we feel is some great information and some stuff we haven't talked about maybe in for a while or if ever on the show here. So we're gonna be talking about some tips if you plan on working in your retirement. For some folks, retirement means stopping, traveling, working with grandkids, whatever it may be, but some people look forward to going part-time work, stuff like that. What are some consequences and what do you have to be careful of? Talking about IRAs and Roth IRAs, a side-by-side -side comparison of the two and what may be appropriate for you. How about long-term care options? Boy, maybe your parents or loved ones you've seen go through that situation and stuff that maybe some education you can take away of the different options that you have. And finally, what about why about getting financial advice is a good idea? I'm gonna share a funny story with you about my drywall experience and how that may relate to your financial portfolio. Retiring well. Brought to you by Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors specializing in retirement planning and serving all of Northern Michigan. Retiring well, helping you plan for a successful and comfortable retirement. Retiring well, plan to retire well. I'd like to share with you maybe some helpful tips if you plan on working in retirement. So whether that's intentional or not, uh, you may find yourself working in retirement. So I wanna just get, walk you through some different ideas that you may wanna consider. So one might be delay your 401k or IRA withdrawal. So if you can postpone that, maybe give it a little bit longer time to grow, maybe to your benefit. Now, if you are still working at age 72, you also may, ha may have the ability to delay uh, your required minimum distribution, but ultimately that's going to depend on what account that it's in. Uh, you have catch-up contributions that, you, that occur after age 50. So 401k plans, IRAs are going to allow you to contribute uh, greater amounts into those retirement plans to ultimately try and build those up uh, leading to your retirement. You wanna be careful about Social Security. So uh, if you're not yet at full retirement age, which is gonna vary depending on what year you were born, uh, then, then you have different income limitations uh, before then you start to be penalized. So taxation on Social Security is another area uh, that's gonna be based on your adjusted gross income along with Social Security. So you wanna be factoring this into your overall plan. You may, may be able to boost your Social Security earnings uh, by working a bit longer. So Social Security is gonna be based on the highest 35 earning years, and that's adjusted for inflation and everything. So perhaps here in these later years, you're getting a higher, earning a higher income than, than you were maybe at the start of your working career. And so ultimately by having those higher earnings, that's gonna increase those overall benefits. Maybe consider delaying your Social Security benefits. So between your full retirement age and 70, it increases by approximately 8% a year, which ultimately is a really nice bump up in income if you can continue to delay. You wanna sign up for Medicare at age 65. There's ultimately a seven month uh, initial enrollment period that starts three months prior to age 65. So that's gonna be a key thing to, to keep in mind. Be careful uh, of, of the high income year years that you may have and what impact that could have on, on Medicare. So if you have a, uh, a year perhaps where there's larger capital gains um, for maybe it's the sale of a rental property or investment property or different stocks that you've held a long time and you realize capital gains, that might bump you into uh, an area where then there's going to be some different um, potential surcharges. So. Be careful of that and, and maybe you really enjoy what your, your current job or career, uh, but you wanna ease into retirement. I know a number of employers out there are open to that idea of okay, maybe starting to work part-time uh, leading up to your retirement. So there's a lot of different benefits of, of working in retirement, but also a few pitfalls. So if you have questions about that, you're welcome to give us a call here at Centennial Wealth Advisory. Hey, welcome back. Uh, I hope that was really helpful for you, that you got to see some different tips about if you are working in retirement or if you plan to retur work in retirement. You know, people will always ask me, hey, what do I need to retire? And, I, and, I, and I'll say, and I've said this before on the show, you need some cash flow contentment, income more than expenses in your retirement, figure out what that looks like, and then you need a purpose. 
And what I found is that there are so many of these retirees that their purpose is a part-time job. They love going to that particular uh, job with reduced schedules, with some more freedom, because it fulfills uh, a portion of their purpose. And so when they're in those situations, there's a few things that you have to be very careful about. You know, we have to look at what does your income look like for the year? What does your social security plan look like? Are you doing any distributions from tax deferred accounts, 401k, uh, traditional IRAs? Are you doing Roth conversions? If that's happening, that they're all connected. And then the other thing, depending on how old you are, what is your health care plan? You know, I just recently had a situation in the Cadillac office where the, it was a consultant and uh, he loved his work and wanted to keep doing it. Something that he had done for 35 years. So we went through, we made a plan on all of those above mentioned items. Uh, he left uh, with a lot of understanding and uh, with a peace that you can only find through learning. Yeah, I mean, that part-time job oftentimes is very, very enjoyable for the retiree. Um, they're, they're going out there doing something that they've always wanted to do. Like, for example, in the Gaylord office, we're in the, the Gulf Mecca of northern Michigan, right? And I think I mentioned this on the show before, but a lot of our clients, they pick up a job at a golf course so they get the free golf and that part-time income. It's usually only two, three days a week. Sometimes it's being a starter on the, the first tee at the golf course, or maybe it's cutting the grass, something like that. Another popular job I seems like in the Gaylord area is working at one of the boat dealerships. A lot of people are just selling those boats so that they can help people get out on and enjoy this northern Michigan water that we have up here. But it's so important to remember that we need to work that income into a plan. And that's what we're here for. We're here to help put all those pieces to the puzzle together for you. All right, well, I hope you found that valuable. Stay tuned, coming up next, we're gonna be talking about IRAs versus Roth IRAs and then long-term care options. You don't want to miss it. Living life isn't always easy. It puts up challenges and obstacles you'll have to overcome. There are responsibilities. You put in effort to provide and take care of your family, to save and invest, to balance work and life. Planning is the first step to succeeding. Plan to retire well. What can Retirement Analyzer do for you? Retirement Analyzer is a software tool that can help you prepare today for your financial future. You've worked hard to save for your retirement, but as you near your retirement, you may have concerns. Have I positioned my retirement savings wisely? Have I saved enough for retirement, and will my savings last throughout my lifetime? What impact could inflation have on my future expenses? What if I suffer a long-term illness? Will I have enough money to cover my medical care expenses and still be able to meet my other financial obligations? Could changes in the income tax rates disrupt my retirement strategy? There's no need to be in the dark as you prepare for your retirement. Retirement Analyzer can help you find answers to all these questions and more. The first step is providing us with information on your financial assets, the type and current value of those assets, as well as your sources of income. Then, we work with you to identify your expected expenses in retirement. This will include a discussion of the lifestyle you envision in retirement, travel, a summer residence, whatever you dream your retirement will be. We'll input the information you provide us into the Retirement Analyzer, and in a very short time, we'll have reports that show us the percentage of assets currently in high-risk vehicles, as well as the percent in lower-risk products. Retirement Analyzer enables us to project your income from year to year in your retirement and see how long your retirement savings may last. As we change the conditions of the report, delaying your retirement date, including costs for long-term care, adjusting the expected tax rate, or adjusting your retirement strategies, we can see how changes in these variables may impact your income in retirement and the longevity of your retirement savings. Let the Retirement Analyzer help you test drive your retirement strategy today, because the time to discover the bumps in the road is not once your trip through retirement has begun. Contact our office today to schedule an appointment for your Retirement Analyzer review. Let's take a few minutes here 
and do a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison of traditional IRAs versus Roth IRAs. Now, we've talked a lot about this about the show over the years of these two different things. Similar, yet vastly different. Traditional IRAs, let's start with the basics. Money is going in pre-tax, so you're getting a tax deduction on that money going in. Helps lower your taxable income, thus paying taxes, a little bit likely less taxes in the year the money is going in depending upon your situation. So money is growing, tax deferred, and at some point down the road, when you take money out, you're going to have to pay income tax on that depending upon what your income tax brackets are and all the various aspects there. So Roth IRA is almost the exact opposite. Money is going in after tax. So no tax deduction in the year you make the contribution likely is not going to change your tax situation like making a, a contribution to a pre-tax. Money is growing tax deferred just like the traditional IRA. But when you go to take those distributions, in most cases, that, that money that's coming out of that Roth IRA is tax-free. So it's not changing your income at that point. So one of the ways that I, I thought was interesting, somebody described the years ago I had heard this was, you know, traditional IRA, you're paying tax on the harvest, not the seed, right? You're putting a contribution in, you're hoping it grows over time, and you have a bigger amount, and then that's what you're paying on as it comes out. A Roth IRA, you're paying the tax on the seed, right? The money is going in after tax, it's growing, and that harvest that's coming out, hopefully a bigger amount after investments, that coming out is tax-free. So from a basic level, those are the two main differences when you look at traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs. Well, the question is oftentimes, well, what one's best for me? Well, depends. There's many factors you have to consider when looking at those options. Sometimes it's income today that we're looking at where maybe there's a need to try to push income down. Maybe you're creeping up into a higher tax bracket and that contribution into that pre-tax account would make a significant difference. Also then, but then look down the road, 20, 30, 40 years from now when maybe you're going to need this money, what does the tax environment look at that time? What situations may you be in? So before you jump into just doing one or the other, this is where that retirement plan comes into play. Even if you're young, even if you're just starting working, what one makes the best sense and is going to match up to your goals for your retirement? In today's day and age, with a longer lifespan, you're more likely to encounter both good and bad market performance. For that reason, when planning for retirement, it's increasingly important to seek guidance from a financial advisor who can help you structure an income strategy that reflects your financial situation, risk tolerance, and investment objectives. You don't want just any advice, but objective financial advice. With so much at stake, it's important that you feel you can trust a financial advisor to consider a wide variety of possible solutions, including both investment and insurance products. Here at Centennial Wealth Advisory, we're not beholden to any certain investment tools or vehicles. We're independent. We can offer a wide variety of investment tools to, that meet your needs. So please, if you have any questions or you want to schedule an initial consultation, don't hesitate to give us a call at the number on the screen. We're happy to help in any way that we can. 
Long-term care options. This is something that uh, I feel is a big concern for people as they approach retirement and maybe those later stages of life. And, and after 17 years at Centennial Wealth Advisory, it seems like one of the more commonly asked questions uh, about whether or not they, people necessarily need to have some type of long-term care. And so that's where, again, the planning comes into play. So let's start with maybe uh, projected cost time frame. So on average, you hear typically uh, length of stay for some type of long-term care, whether that's nursing home, assisted living, maybe it's at-home care, on average maybe around three years. And depending on the level of care, at least here in Northern Michigan, it, it varies significantly, but you know, perhaps you're looking at the 60 to 100 plus thousand dollars per year. So you figure for an individual, you know, you could be in the 200, 300,000 plus range uh, that may need to be spent on long-term care. So. How are you gonna pay for that? Well, if it happens, if, if you happen to be married and it happens to both you and, and your spouse, now all of a sudden you take those numbers I just gave you and double that. So that's a significant amount that you're talking about. So, you know, you, maybe you're in the fortunate position where you have uh, extra money set aside in, in savings for this. So this would simply be called self-insuring. So you're basically saying, I've got this money over in savings, in retirement accounts, whatever it may be that I don't plan on spending during my lifetime. And that's sort of your, your backup nest egg to help cover those long-term care costs. Um, and, and, and maybe you're okay with spending down your assets over, uh, over your lifetime if some type of situation like this arises. Or maybe if you're legacy minded and, and not wanting to spend down all of your assets, then that might be a whole different story. So uh, that's where you might start looking at the, the typical types of traditional long-term care insurance. So this is where you'd have some regular premium that you'd be paying and it would provide a certain level uh, of benefits over a period of years. The, the drawback to this is gonna be there's an ongoing cost and, and that cost could rise over time, uh, which we've seen in a lot of cases and it's ultimately a use it or lose it type of insurance where you could pay those premiums in all those years and if you don't, don't need long-term care, you know, those premiums have gone ultimately to the insurance company. There might be a, there's a type of different hybrid type of account where maybe you've set aside money, it provides a certain level of long-term care benefits, but then if, if ultimately you don't end up needing long-term care, then maybe there's a, a portion of that original deposit uh, that goes back to uh, your loved ones. Uh, another scenario might be life insurance policies that have different accelerated death benefit riders where you could access that death benefit early to help pay for long-term care. So there's a variety of different uh, ways that you can prepare for long-term care. Uh, if you need help preparing a plan, we welcome you to give us a call and help you plan to retire well. Welcome back. Lots of great information there on comparing IRAs to Roth IRAs and when they might make sense for you. Um, just a real quick scenario here out of the Gaylord office. We had a couple come in and they're, they really wanted to put all their 401k funds into a Roth account. They thought, hey, you know what? Tax rates are probably only going to go up from here. Let's just put it all into the Roth account and be done with it. It ended up, they had a, a sizable amount in their 401k and to convert all that money from IRA to Roth would be a very sizable tax hit, okay? And so it made the most sense for them given their different income um, sources to only convert or take money from the 401k and put it into a Roth account about $35,000. And that was based on income of about $70,000. And the reason we were doing that is to maximize that 12% tax bracket. Once they saw all the numbers and we, we figured it all out for them, they understood the reasoning and the logic behind only putting a certain portion into that Roth account. But everybody's situation is so unique and that's why it's important to understand what's going on with your portfolio. Absolutely, you know, I heard Nick say in that, my takeaway is know your numbers. You know, the internet is great. It's gonna, in, in a quick little Google search, it'll tell you what the tax brackets are. And if you just filed your taxes, you know what your AGI number is. And so whether you're single or you're married, just do a little bit of research, a little bit of self-education and just know your numbers. Where are you in that bracket? Um, maybe you're somebody that is like, you know what? I'd rather go to talk to somebody that, that gets lost in the numbers. The numbers speak to them. 
give us a call. You know, we love figuring out those problems because it's uh, always individualized. Everybody has their own unique situation. And when we get to have a tax problem, maybe there has been a lack of tax diversification. All your money's in your tax deferred bucket, not in the tax-free or the taxable buckets, then we have to figure out what some potential paths forward, and we love doing that. So if you have what you feel like is a lack of tax diversification, if you don't quite know your numbers or what is going on there, please feel free, give us a call. Uh, there's a no obligation uh, way to meet with us and help us teach you what your options are. So stay tuned uh, to why is it important to get financial advice. You can have a portfolio or you can have a plan. You can play it safely or you can safely plan. You can guess when to take Social Security or you can make your decision based on detailed analysis. You can hope your savings will last your entire retirement or you can take action and know. You can let life happen to you or you can take control. You can go it alone or you can have an experienced guide ready to walk with you every step of the way. We are Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial planners serving all of Northern Michigan, offices in Gaylord, Petoskey, Traverse City, and Cadillac. Simply call the number on your screen for a complimentary initial consultation and let us help you plan to retire well. Let's talk a little bit about why getting financial advice is a good idea. And one of the things that I think of is a, is a little saying I had heard years ago from a dear friend, and he said, you don't know what you don't know. And in many cases, that's true in not just financial stuff, but in all aspects of life, right? Usually seeking advice, whether it's financial or other professional advice, there's some cost associated with that, right? So there's a value proposition that goes on in your mind. The advice you're getting or services or whatever it may be, that, that has to be of greater value to you than the cost, right? So one thing that I think of personally is we had bought a house, this was a, a, a many years ago, and it needed a little bit of work inside, a, a little bit of remodeling, if you will, and I had to change a couple walls around in the, in the lower level. Well, I thought, well, it can't be that hard. I just need to do this and do that. And then it come to drywall. For any of you that's tried drywall out there, I give all the credit in the world to professional drywallers. I worked on this drywall and mudding and taping for weeks. I got dust everywhere. It's a mess. My wife's upset with me because it's taking forever and I'm spending every night of the week trying to get this thing just right. And every time I would work on it, I felt like it got worse. And it got worse. And you know, you look down the wall and it, it, it's wavy and, and you sand and you put another coat on it. Finally, I just got to the point where I was like, okay, I think we're as good as it's gonna get, let's paint the thing. Well, boy, then you can see really how bad it is when you, after you paint it, right? So me, thinking I could have handled this, I should have sought professional advice because for the next three or four years, I had to look at this wall, and every time I looked at it, it reminded me of that <laughs> bad situation, right? So like with fina financial stuff, don't, don't be looking at your portfolio with regret later on, right? You know, seek out that advice, and advice is different from every person. Don't think advice that maybe your neighbor or friend or buddy's got is the same advice that is appropriate for you. 
We want to help avoid emotional decisions, help making sure your goals focused and that you're not just focusing on one thing. Just like when I did that drywall project, there was a lot of pieces and probably some important prep steps that I mess, missed. Just like with retirement planning, there's different pieces that all go together. Income planning, investment planning, tax planning, estate, health insurance, legacy, all these different aspects that you don't want to overlook. One piece, even if you do the rest pretty good, one missed piece can be a disaster to the overall plan. So why seek professional advice and why get a, a, maybe a second opinion? Why not? Why not just get a second opinion? See what you have going, see how it matches up with those goals and objective, and see if there's something that you can learn while going through that process to put you in a better situation to have a higher probability of success so you can plan to retire well. Hey, welcome back. I hope that you got to see what some different things that you might want to look for when uh, it comes to why you might want to seek help from uh, financial advisors or why you seek financial help. Hey, it's a big part of everybody's life. There is a quick little story I want to tell you about uh, that I learned from Ray Dalio talked about his uh, dot collector and basically his premise was it doesn't matter who in the company if they're a first week employee or a 15 year employee they all have the same opportunity to say their opinion and then after they say their opinion then they get to work through to see if that's an opinion that we should trust and I think uh, that is a great way to look at uh, how to approach learning something. You know, I personally want to take a whole lot of data in. I want to run it through my experience. I want to run it through my own brain to then be able to sift down and have a good decision. Well, part of getting financial advice is doing just that. You can go meet with a lot of different people. You can go get a lot of different opinions. And then after you sift through all of that data point, you get to have, I think, something that could be very productive. You have your own opinion, but you didn't just block something out. Um, you actually went on the learning journey. And so, you know, uh, what we get to do here at Centennial Wealth is we get to take in a whole lot of data points from a whole lot of different experiences and uh, form, you know, some good strong opinions because of that. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to you don't know what you don't know, right? You, that's why you're seeking out that advice. You know, what comes to mind in my own life is when I first became a father, right? Some 10 years ago, I had no idea what I was doing at that point. Now, I, I read books, I, I searched out information from family. I mean, my parents have six boys, uh, my wife's parents had 10 children so a lot of experience there but you're going out you're trying to figure out and find that information from reputable sources and that's what you're after I remember when my oldest daughter was born I looked her over yes she's got her ten fingers and ten toes and so forth I looked down at her leg and I noticed she didn't have any kneecaps I was like what's up with that is that normal so right away I asked the doctor yep that that's normal kneecaps will come a little bit later but you don't know what you don't know right so that's that's why you got to search that person out. Do your research, and please, if, if you found this information valuable, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Set up that free no obligation consultation, or if you want more information, you can check us out on the website or go to YouTube forward slash retiring well, and we've got a bunch of more episodes out there with lots of great information. So hopefully you'll join us next week. Have a great week.